going to trade the NBA.com. This is John Lister Reports for the 17th. And look at that. This is exactly what we were talking about. So we had right here a um, little dip down. We saw the green cross, but we were like, okay, you've got to see orange dip in order to get your buy. And then as soon as we got past that uh, 67, the orange daily had dipped to exactly what you look for from a buy configuration. And we blew past the, what I was looking at was, was the 38% range um, to really propel things. Of course, that puts now the 50% in play, which looking at our numbers, 28, 29, 75. Intraday, though, it left us uh, quite a few uh, positive extreme retraces. But I will point it out a little later as we get into the intraday ones on the 50K. Um, we can see where the continuation was going and how it was looking from that. And you can see this massive turnaround. And this was that I was talking about before uh, from a delta V reversal concept where you end up with this tail situation. But you got to have that close that gets you like this right back up here usually it happens within the first day or so after that but this was pretty extreme so now you've pretty much recovered most of the pick decline uh, which really didn't have any particular reason other than it was a good opportunity to clear a bunch of stops and you can see that despite it uh, nothing really happening uh, from a euro standpoint it's still relatively uh, elevated uh, given the parameters of what's going on within the EU, it's a little extreme, but it's just what uh, the current uh, trade is. And sometimes, you know, despite your opinions of things, you just have to go with what is. Um, like as with TLT, we see that there's been a huge uh, withdrawal of uh, funds from institutional investors as retail investors filled in the gaps. And uh, you would expect a little bit more of a rise from uh, treasuries from that because that's typically where you would park your money and that would elevate it because of the increased demand. Of course, the government's issuing so much debt right now, you might not notice it as much. Um, and oil, uh, still holding below that ABM uh, green, flirting with it just a little bit as we've seen short-term buyers uh, from a reset here turn in and then also mid-term buyers popping up in the green. Uh, and no dip below the red line, so it had not reached a point of, you know, uh, selling being dramatic as far as now the depiction. And gold, slight retrace back into that, and then it's got some positive extremes going to have to fill back into In fact, it, the whole thing was positive extreme from that giant gap up. Well, here was the intraday, and so you can see all these little magenta lines, and so that was the beginning of marking some of the old extremes and we'll leave them in there because while things are so far away from them now um, we can see how quickly they come back to them but we never really got any um, strong sell signals in any way shape or form uh, the earliest ones that started to come in uh, were the clean DOC spread but every time they were popping up you had full resets of steel which just gave you a new reboot impetus um, and a new buy every single time it dipped below uh, so it was just a repeat it, this is the exact inverse of what we saw during the selling days where the steel stays above uh, that zero level or even particularly above the uh, red and uh, green and it pretty much floats up at the top just playing around with the cyan in this particular case you actually get cyan below red and does the exact same thing but kind of inverted and that just shows you the strength of uh, the run when it's taking place we did have a, another decent one that took place it was like right about here but again all it did was dip down enough to then generate new buy configurations that just uh, continued uh, so, started marking, these aren't all of them, of course, because if we marked every single level, um, you know, going up here, uh, these all kind of filled going back uh, until this one right over here. Um, your most recent ones are going to be right there. This one was already filled with all of those, so all of those get wiped out. And your most recent ones right here and here had already been filled back in. And you're making new ones right now. So little bullish uh, run and that's kind of normal after a big drop like that you get a lot of short covering because there's no reason not to lock in the gains on that kind of move and 
then you just be able to be flexible with it because then people see opportunity and they want to jump in and buy all that. It's strange to have that significant a move um, middle month like that, but uh, if it is accurate about uh, institutionals moving, they're caught upside down. And what happens then, later on, they're going to have to get back into the market in order to match returns. Otherwise, they're going to get left behind. And this is why we sometimes end up with November, December rallies because uh, some people haven't made their... Uh, matching quota, particularly if they got hurt on the uh, downside move and uh, sold in between that. Uh, you know, you pretty much turned all the way back around. I mean, you're still relatively close to the overall highs. I mean, this has not been uh, anything dramatic by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, if we go back to where the extremes broke out, you're actually above that level. I mean, you're equivalent to where we were in August. So not exactly... Uh, the end of the world from an October standpoint. So the doom and gloomers, you know, they always have their stories. But it was quite uh, decent action when you look at some of these in the breaks below. Uh, the red line with the cyan, you know, being always long and then boom. Uh, you always get a little concerned when you see this one because this is that uh, spread that I talk about where green dips below and steel crosses below cyan, and even though you're still up there with your elevated red, um, when that cyan is approaching zero, this is your best short run. Your expectation, though, is that that cyan is gonna cross through over the red. Uh, in this particular case, it did, and actually did it pretty well, and then you look for the end of it, which would be where the steel crosses the red, which is right there. So, I mean, it beautifully identifies exactly the downrange. Now, what you didn't have control over is how much downrange you got. Uh, and a lot of that was due to the fact that you really weren't seeing a lot of uh, extreme selling in any way, shape, or form uh, throughout that. So, all in all, good stuff. Um, well, I was going to show you the 50K because it was a poignant reference going into it. So, the 50K had bought back here and um, on the dip of the orange and that. And what was interesting about it is, again, we talk about this where you look for the orange to cross above green and... It does so, but in this particular case, the green had crossed over cyan, and so that negates the value of the orange. And so then it's just a matter of, okay, does green stay above um, cyan? And as long as it does, you're still in a buy. So um, I'll be making adjustments to this on the 50K program, the MBI Opus uh, 2 and that, because it's, a, it's very effective. And in some cases, like these losses, it already would have recognized the end of the run being, you know, just after here when the orange... Uh, had moved up against it and then clearly um, once you had that uh, cyan break above the uh, green you know that the uh, long set is over there's no reason to wait for that kind of a sell this one in particular the same situation almost an immediate turnaround let you know that you know after that buy signal wasn't going to happen so a lot of that can be uh, avoidance uh, which I think will be very effective in proving it because while this still does exceptionally well, the win rate being in the low 40s uh, and move up on that uh, will dramatically improve the um, win rate as well as profit factor. I was just shrinking this a little bit so you can see how well the 50K uh, covers it when it goes into uh, massive sell mode and then the slow turnaround. And so you can see it from a 50K standpoint over the last, you know, several days we're midway back into that uh, complete decline almost backed up near where we were for the highs so doing pretty good as uh, let's see the mbi opus bought at 56 and 59 so you can already see it's quite a bit uh, <laughs> of a gain almost 70 points so doing pretty good overall um, just that screen a little over so that you can see the end values. There you go. As always, though, I will put up uh, charts that is relevant. Trade well. We'll talk again later.